So I have some 50 slides uh, to go over probably less than 25 minutes or something. <laughs> so let's see how, how it goes. The schedule so, time is three minutes. Okay. It's so, lunch break after yours, so. So this is uh, the first part of the debugging tools. So why do you use the debuggers? Because we want to find the, uh, the, the programming errors, you know, uh, that can crash your code and uh, sometimes it can make the program hangs and uh, you can generate wrong results. So how do you usually find, uh, find them and fix them? The usual way is to uh, use the print statement. Uh, this is what I did also as uh, in the past and add a print statement around some suspicious area and the compile the code and the run the program and the examine all the printed values uh, in order to guess, uh, you know, extract some sort of hint. And if that was not successful, you would, you add another print statement somewhere else and you kind of get this thing. You know, the problem with this is even though this is kind of easy way, uh, to uh, try to solve the problem, it's very difficult to guess what is wrong and the, what to print. So it, it is really time consuming and it's very tedious and it is really frustrating. Uh, also, if we print a lot of, lot of um, stuff out there and it's very easy to, you know, the, uh, to see that the word is wrong from the, the printed text values here. So, this is why we are using debuggers. So the, the debugging uh, the workflow is you kind of uh, uh, build your program and uh, start your program on the debugger. And, the, and when you start it, you kind of you know, uh, set up places where the program should stop for a moment. So, and then you run, run, the, run the program on the debugger. And then when the program stops there, and uh, the what is called the breakpoints, and then you kind of check the variables, you know, check the values of the variables to see that whether they have you know expected values or something might have wrong uh, gone wrong. So you, you kind of investigate you know, around that area, and if you don't get any any uh, hint from there, then you can define a different breakpoints, and you can continue this run on the debugger. So it's a lot easier because you don't have to compile every time; you just compile only once. And that saves a lot of effort, actually. And you can actually uh, control the program executions. You can stop and you can continue, et cetera. And also, the tool has a lot of uh, the, you know, the uh, features uh, so that you, you, can, you can print, you can vis visualize, you can actually plot the values using the, uh, the visualization tool of the, the debugger so that you can actually visually ch quickly check whether something might have gone wrong here. So, on Cori, we have uh, several kinds of debuggers. So the, uh, the two types are parallel, uh, the traditional, the uh, GUI tools called the DDT and the total view. They are kind of you know, main debuggers, but also we have a kind of specialized debuggers so like STAT, ATP, Belgrind, and the Intel Spectre. And the STAT and the ATP are quite sometimes useful uh, to debug uh, hanging programs. If your program hangs, for some reason, then you want to find out where the program hangs here. So to, uh, for that purpose, STAT and ATP are very powerful, very simple, and very powerful. The background, as you know, that that is a suite of debugging and profiling tools. But the, mostly people know, know that uh, by its, uh, the, the memory debugging tool, memcheck. So it's, it, it kind of use it, it can, uh, show that a lot of the memory related messages from there you can actually see that where there is a memory leaks or the memory uh, errors here. So the, let's go over the DD10 total view. That is, a, as I said, a, this is GUI based traditional parallel debuggers. So you can use it uh, with the C, C, Fortran, uh, MPI, OpenMP, PCS, etc. So we have a quite a uh, large number of uh, the license seats, 4096 for DDT. And for the total view, we have a small, smaller uh, license, 512. Um, but uh, you know, these tools are complementary so that if you cannot find the error with one, one tool, you can try a different one. And that, that I was able to do that uh, in a certain situation. So it's a kind of, you know, uh, good to have two kinds of better, uh, the debuggers here. 
So the how to build and run uh, with a DDT. So you have to use minus compile with minus G flag uh, to add the debugging symbols. And you uh, do not include any optimization in your code so that the, uh, the, the logical flow is very similar to the, uh, what, you're, what you write down in your, in your program. So use the minus O zero for no optimization. You build it. And uh, when you, uh, you start the interactive batch job and you load uh, the uh, linear forge module, and then you start the, uh, uh, your, your application with a DDT like that. And there you set the, uh, the run parameters. And uh, the, so as Steve, Steve uh, mentioned earlier, so if you run, if you try to run the SQUI tool far away from NERSC, there's a it's really painful, you know, the, uh, because when you click it and the response will come out in a few minutes later. So that is because of the intrinsically high latency associated with the X11 client and uh, the server uh, communication here. So uh, as he said that the one, one way to do it, to deal with it is to use a no machine NX. And the another way is to use the, uh, the uh, ARMS forge remote client. So, uh, this is kind of a popular way. So I kind of showed in the web page how to set it up, how to download it, and how to set up the, uh, the remote client. Some people prefer that. And uh, basically, uh, the, the setup is explained in this web page here. Basically, uh, you need to set up the, uh, uh, the host name using the, uh, the login node and the mom node and the, the locations where the program is installed. And uh, this is uh, uh, probably not much, yeah, this is kind of, this is uh, the command uh, to load up the uh, linear forging module, basically. So anyway, when you start the DDT, there, there are several kind of, you know, the, 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 tap, the navigation buttons here up, up here. So from there, you can actually advance Sorry about that. Advance your program in the in the source code here, and then you can uh, uh, advance or if you if you go into for program if it is uh, the line that is calling a, a program. Uh, sorry about that. And also on the right hand side, there's a it shows the 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 values of a local variables here. And, and also you show the some sort of the lines here, which are called the spark lines. This is the, the variable values across the uh, MPI ranks here. So this flat line means that uh, this variable value is constant over all the MPI rank. So my ID this is MPI rank. So of course, you know, you see that this kind of increase, monotonically increasing line, et cetera. So you can have a kind of visual quick check, you know, whether uh, something might, might have gone wrong. This is the parallel stack, the core stack. Sorry about the words. I'm not sure what is going on. So this is a parallel core stack. This is a, to show that the where MPA ranks are in this, uh, the parallel, uh, the core frame here. And also if you want to print out certain, certain things, you can put an expression here in this window so that you can check the, uh, the values are correct or not. So as I said that uh, you need to create a certain special points, breakpoints. So this is the points where you want the program to start when, uh, when that point is reached. This is called the breakpoint. You can create it by using the uh, double click on the line, etc. There are several ways. You know. the, another type is called the watch point. So you kind of set a watch point for a certain variable uh, so that the, when the variable uh, values changes, the, the debugger will stop there so that you can check the, uh, the at that point. You know, if you don't expect that, that variable to change, but the program somehow got changed, you know, you want to know where that thing happens here. So this is where, you know, why you, you want to use the watch, watch points. Trace points is like, you know, the kind of print statement. When, when it reaches there, it just printed that, the, the, the debugger reached the deadline, and you can also specify a certain list of uh, variables uh, uh, so that you can print the values here. So it's kind of, you know, using this uh, uh, issue, uh, the features, you can easily uh, check the flow of the program. 
as I said, that the, there are several ways of checking the variables. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, easy, easy one is NDA, multi-dimensional array viewer. This is to uh, the visually uh, check the values of the variable array, for instance. So here uh, I can click a, a, a variable and to check the NDA, uh, display the variable, and I can plot it here, just like here, you know. So everything looks smooth, but if, uh, you know, in, uh, when I was working on this, the pr developing a code, I had a lot of issues, a lot of errors occurring when, the, uh, when there's uh, the header exchange, when the, 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 at, the, at the boundary of the NK, uh, uh, the domain. So that's where a lot of errors happen. So in that case, you will see certain oddities on the edge of the domain, for instance. If you don't, you know, this is a kind of give you a kind of way of a quick sanity check after the hello exchange. So you can use this kind of tools. The total view is another the GUI tool. Uh, but uh, but uh, so you can start this way, you know, the start the uh, interactive batch job and the load the total view module, total view module, and then you can start the application using this command. And it, uh, it requires a certain, you know, you to click you know, certain buttons uh, before you start. So once again, the, when the total view is started, you can, uh, the, this portion shows the, uh, the source code and that from there, you can define the breakpoints here. You can actually click on the variable to check the variable values, et cetera. And also this shows that the, the values are variable here as well. So once again, that, you know, there are many tools uh, to display, uh, to check the, the status of the, the, your program running here using this tool. And another thing is the, called the stat. This is uh, developed at uh, Lawrence Livermore. This is uh, to gather stack backtraces. You know, if you call fun the function A and the which calls function B, and then it shows all the sequences of calls up to that the current location. The, actually, it gathers all the stack backtrace information from all MK ranks, and they show them in a graphical way in a single uh, plot. Uh, you know, single tree-like structure here. So it's kind of easy to see that the where each MPI rank is located. So you can quickly check the status of your, your, your program using stat and then for the uh, uh, detailed information for detailed the debugging effort, you can use the DDT or total view. So uh, there are several stack commands here, usually but let me show, show an example, quick example. So if your code is hanging, for instance, you can use the stat for uh, to start to debug the, uh, your code. One is to build your code that way, this way, and start the uh, interactive batch job, run it, and then uh, run it in the background, and it will show the, the process ID, and then you can run that uh, the stat CL, uh, uh, with the, that process ID, then it will sample the, the core trace backtraces from all the MPI ranks here. So back here, there are several samples. It's actually, I think these samples are about 10 times here. So when it, uh, and then it create a dot file. And at that point, you can actually visual, you can visualize it uh, on that dot file. So this is what you see on the, on the, on the, if you do that. So it shows that rank zero was here. Rank one, rank three was here and also here. So as I said, that there are tens, there are sampling about 10 times you know, so, uh, among the, 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 those 10 samples, uh, rank three was here, but the other, uh, the other samples, it was here. And that this is rank one and two were here. So if the code is hanging, it's it stuck somewhere in this stage, you can tell that where each MPI rank is. And then you can check using the debugger 
or look at your source code to see why this kind of uh, the hanging happening at these locations. So another tool that is useful is the ATP. This is a craze tool. So what it does is that when the program fails, the ATP invokes stat so that it can generate the, uh, the, the previous, you know, the, the summary of the stack back traces for all MPI ranks. So the ATP is loaded on query, but it is not enabled by default. So to use ATP to debug the hanging program, for instance, you need to set invariant variable in your, in your batch script before the S run command. So this is an example. So you build your code and you enable the, the ATP. And this is uh, the Intel a Fortran related environment variable. If, we, if your code is built, if your code is a Fortran code built with the Intel compiler, then you set this environment variable additionally, and you run it. And then uh, if your code is hanging, then you SSH to see uh, the MAM node, and then you check, uh, you see the, 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 the status of your program uh, by using sl-count command that Helen mentioned. And then you see that uh, this is the, the, the MPI job that you are running that is, that is always hanging. And then you cancel it using this command here and the get out of the login node, the mom node. And then when it cancels it, it generates a dot file. So at that point, you load a step module and then visual uh, the display is one of these two dot files here. If you do that, you see that it is, it is showing that uh, at the time of uh, the, you ran the S cancel, the rank zero was here, rank one and two was here, rank three was here. Again, you can go back to your source code to see that what might be having, happening at these, each MPI rank in these locations to try to deduce you know, the, the cause of the error. So that is a pretty useful, simple tools here. So I want to announce that the, the tutorial coming up on July 16th. This is a to, uh, inter, to go uh, to, to learn about the ARM tools, DDT and also the, the um, MAP, the second tool. And third tool is ARM performance reports tool. This is to give a, uh, the performance summary. This is, uh, I think that this will be a very good uh, tutorial for the beginning and the intermediate level users. So, and also we'll teach you how to use map and the performance reports to provide Python application performance here. So it will be very useful and it will be, it'll be a half day tutorial. It will be given by the engineer. So please go to the, this website the, the date is, is not correct. This is previous date, which was delayed until the uh, July 16th. So go over there and register. So I think that that's it about the, uh, uh, my debugging tool. There is a quick question. Yeah. Uh, are we having a total, total view to uh, tutorial sometime in the future too? No, we don't have. We don't have a plan, but I was kind of discussing the vendor, and uh, we may have a, the tutorial sometimes in the fall. So we kind of discuss about that, but we, it is not set definitely yet. It's not part of this uh, on the July 16th tutorial for sure. No, that is about right. the ARM tool, the yeah. DDT map and the performance reports. Okay. Any other question? Okay, so I have about seven minutes left. Yeah, you, you can go over five minutes because I, I did go over. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't start so, at, at, on time as well. No problem. So anyway, now this is part of uh, uh, profiling tools. This is to measure the code performance. If, if, we want to, if you see that your code is running really poorly, that you want to see that where the code is taking so much time, you want to improve the uh, code performance here. So in Cori, we have a lot of uh, tools, where it's CrayPad, the, the second is uh, ARM map, 
and the performance reports, Intel Retune, popular one, Intel Advisor, Trace Analyzer Collector, etc. So I'm going to cover the CrayPad and the ARM for today. So CrayPad is a is a Cray is mostly text-based kind of you know the big big tool here. This is a to create performance analysis tool that has been around for a very long time. And it is made of several parts of modules here. So one is the uh, this puff to stash base model. This is required to load the actual performance tool, mo uh, tool module here. So you need to load this one first uh, to, before you load this one of these two modules. And also this is required if we want to access the performance tool related documentation, manifest, et cetera. So, and puff tools is the full suite and uh, Puff to Light is this kind of easy, easy uh, to use version. So, um, so to use the create pad, you have to unload the Darshan module. Darshan, this is a, another profiling tool for IL. So it, it kind of interface each other. So you want to unload the, this one, and then you load the Puff to base or Puff to tools before you start to compile, and then. The wonderful thing is that you have to create an object code, that old file, so you need to create this line as well. And then you, you need to run the instrument is kept executable uh, in scratch, uh, you know, the parallel file system. If you run it on the home system, it will probably not run. So there are two ways of collecting performance data. One is a sampling uh, program, uh, sampling experiment. This is to, uh, to the sample program location, program, what, what they call the program counters. This is a location in your program at, the t at a certain regular time interval so that uh, at the end, if you see uh, the, uh, a lot more samples in a particular location, then it means that the codes are spending a lot more time there. So by default, the, the credit pad uses uh, the time interval, interval of 0.01 second. And the tracing experiment is, is different. This is uh, used uh, when you build your code, you specify this certain number of functions to be traced. So the trace function can be user-defined functions. I mean, the one that you define, or it can be a library function like MPI functions uh, as well. And what it does is that when you use this experiment, it records the, uh, when the function is entered and when the function is exited. So it can give you more detailed information. It's not the sample, you know, the location. You can actually see that when the program enter, enters, it knows where it enters. So it exactly knows that the, the exact amount of the uh, less time in the that, in that program. So, this one is, uh, it gives more detailed information, but the overhead is uh, a little larger. So to, to build it, the pop to light, the simpler one, you load these two models and build it this way. This is an uninstrumented original version. This is instrumentally executable. And then you run this, the instrumented executable. When you do it, and then it'll create uh, this uh, the directory where the, all the uh, collected performance data are located. The, the last letter S signifies this is the results of sampling. Okay. And then this one shows the uh, performance data summary in the standard out. And if you look into this directory, there are several files. One is that example, this is raw performance data. This is processed. Of already pops to light, already pr uh, processed this Excel file to create AP2 file. This is portable uh, process data, and this is text-based report out of this data here. So as I said, that the slum standard out file contains the, the, the performance data from this pop to light run. Also, the exact same thing can be found in that directory. It shows a lot of our tables, you know, the runtime by functions. So like here, so it has spent about uh, 2.4 billion samples, you know, one sample, time is 0.01 sec, 0.01 second, right? So it has this many samples. 
this many samples in, in the other main, main routine, this many samples in here. So you can see that the weather code is you know, spending uh, time here. So again, you can uh, vis uh, display this by source code and also by line here. And you can uh, visually display using the APP tool, like here, the uh, pie chart, and uh, the performance, uh, what is that, the uh, tree. And also, if it is MPI communication, you can show the MPI communication pattern as well. So now this is uh, how to use a pop tool, not the, the simpler one. Uh, this uh, is sampling. So what is going on here? Is uh, you load this module, uh, build it, and then you build uh, the instrument executable using pep build. So you, you get uh, the the original the uninstrument original executable, and the, when you run the pep build on it, you create an instrument version here, and run with this instrument version. And again, it creates a directory as for sampling. And then after that, you run the path report on that directory to create a text-based report here. And as again, this is content of the directory. This is raw data. This is uh, the process data. And uh, this one, interestingly, this one shows the uh, proposed build options for the next tracing experiments, if that is necessary. Uh, based on the results from the sampling run here. So this is uh, the ASCII file that show, that contains all the build, build um, options here. Again, pet report shows the, the performance data out of here, you can see something like that. And the APA, that is what, what I was talking about. This is a tool, uh, the create tool guide you to create a next Trace, trace experiment out of the, uh, the sampling experiment. This is called APA. And again, as I said in the previous case, it, it has created this, the APA, the build option file. So you rerun the pet build using this file, then it will create uh, this instrument, another instrument version, but this time for tracing. So when you run it, you will see the tracing results here. So again, you see the various kind of uh, plotting data. And uh, for the tracing experiment, if you want to do a tracing experiment right away, uh, you can load this one and the pet build using the tracing of the build option, pet build option here. This is uh, the original executable uninstrumented. This is an instrument executable for tracing experiments. So if you use a minus U, you will trace all the functions defined in your uh, your user source code, and you can select a certain num certain uh, user functions. Also, you can also specify certain library functions like that. So once again, if you run it, you get a results. T for tracing. You have to rerun. You have to run the path report on it to get the text-based re results. Again, this is raw data, a P2 file. Uh, so pet report shows the old kinds of interesting uh, things. Now that instead of sampling, this is a tracing resource, right? So instead of samples, we have an actual time span in each uh, subroutine, uh, it's a function here. So this is a uh, previously set for sampling, we have a sampling col sample columns here, right? So now we have this more accurate, uh, uh, the the information about the use of the subroutine, for instance. So the pop tools can do a lot more. It can actually suggest a certain better MPI communication pattern by using a different rank order, for instance. And uh, uh, Helen, do I have enough time? Yes, go ahead. Yeah. So this is an ARM map. This is ARM parallel profiling tool. This is based on purely sampling. And the interesting thing is that this uh, source code lines are annotated with the performance data, actually, so that you can, you can easily spot the hotspots. So 
The, the other thing that is different from the gray pad is that this is time series of performance data, not the summary, not the aggregate sum, right? We have a quite a lot of, lot of large number of uh, license here. Again, you have to use Annex or Remote Client. So build the code. I mean, the, this is straightforward. I gave you all the, the actual commands here, so you can follow along. Uh, you can start a uh, interact batch job, load this one, start uh, your program on the map. Then it will create uh, this kind of output here. So you see that the, this line shows that you know peak at a certain this period. This is a time series. This is kind of summary. Uh, you see that the where in this case is a 48%. This is probably around the 40% associated with this loop. So you can kind of show that the, the hotspots, I'm sorry about that, I don't know what's going on. Hotspots right away uh, associate with the source code. So you can easily find the, you know, the, the lines that you spend a lot of time. The one, one warning is that it, because uh, it has to deal with the time series stuff for source code, uh, it, the map uses total 1,000 samples per MPI rack. So it may not be suitable for long runs. So if you kind of extract the uh, source kernel you know, for optimizing the certain area, then you can use it. But uh, you know, keep in mind that this is 1,000 samples, only collect one side, 1,000 samples, even though you can increase the sample size, this, but they, it is, uh, they arm strongly uh, discourage that. So keep in mind. So again, this list the, uh, the, the hotspot based on the different, this is open MP regions, for instance, this is a functions, et cetera. The interesting thing is that again, this is a time series performance data, not the aggregate sum summary at the end. Yeah. So you can add more display. So once again, because it has a limited number of samples, 1,000 point k rank, if you use a multi processes, it has to be divided, you know, each, process, each thread has to use a smaller uh, number of samples here. So because of that concern, you may want to, you may want to come, uh, profile only a certain section, not the entire code, so that you don't need to uh, expand on the, uh, you know, initial, initialization, program initialization or finalization part where the, a lot of IO is being done. So you can use a, this kind of API call to start and the stop sampling here. And the final one is that this is kind of to show the, the performance summary. So what this tool does is to kind of, at the end of the run, it gives a quick summary about the, your program, whether it is compute bound, I'm sorry about that, compute bound, MPI bound, or IO bound. So results in HTML file, you, you build your code as you do with uh, for map, the status, generate the HTML file. So in this case, you're spending a lot of computation here. So it says that it's a compute bound, right? So this is kind of give you, you know, what kind of, what kind of, uh, you kind of show, show the nature of your the code performance at the end. So again, we have an ARM tool tutorial on July 16th. I think that's it. Do you have any questions? Thanks, Osan. Uh, the questions are being answered in the Google Doc. All right.